All right, day two. It's going well. It's going well. A few little issues. I've got all the bleeders. 104, 118. I don't forget how many. Um, bungs out or putty out or whatever was in them and um, a first round of dremeling them out and uh, a shot of uh, alcohol to try and help dry it out uh, a fair amount of time with the heat gun to help dry it out so that's why I wanted my first priority is to get these things to start to dry still not quite sure what I'm going to do with them but uh, they need to be dry no matter what uh, again this sort of mess at the bow at the hood ends, still not quite sure what I'm going to do here. Obviously, whatever it is, is only temporary. Next haul out, these are going to have to be dealt with a little better. Um, got some scraping done just because last night it was cool enough that I thought I'd get down there and do some of the bottom. But of course, the bottom isn't a priority just yet. Um, sanded the lower two thirds of the top sides last night in the shade. And uh, I'm just waiting for the sun to come around the corner because I've sanded the other side this morning in the shade because uh, it's going to be another hot one no doubt about it so the bottom actually this whole side is now sanded and um, ready for uh, whatever I'm going to do with the uh, with all the bleeders um, there are a couple new problems and uh, probably the easiest place to show you is on the other side again start with the tour um, I know the boat has a couple of broken ribs in the same place both sides right here at the turn of the bilge. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine broken ribs at the turn of the bilge. That's where they always seem to happen. Um, not bad, but there's just a slight um, fold here at this seam. And on this side it's not bad. Um, not that hasn't been repaired. But on the other side they've filled it with slick seam. Uh, this reputable yard. Now slick seam is an okay stuff for those of you who don't know it's basically a waxy greasy goo um, that you can put in a seam to sort of clean it up in a panic. It's this gray oh I don't know what you'd call it it's anyway it's a sticky mess. Now I'm no expert on the stuff but I get the feeling that once you use it you're stuck with it because um, it would be quite a job to get that stuff out. So I'm gonna but what they did, they just packed it into a few spots. There's still a lot of old, hard, um, white paying in there that's just dry and brittle and not doing everything. The other side is the same situation. Uh, I don't want to do anything too permanent here because we are going to fix all these ribs and eventually that will come fair again. And I don't want tight uh, caulking in there to make it difficult to straighten that out. Of course, I'll have to reef these out whenever we do that. So I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do in there, uh, probably just tighten up the caulking, the, the cotton in behind a little bit, make sure there's plenty in there, and just put something over the top to protect the cotton, um, but tolerate maybe a moderate amount of leaking in the meantime. Anyway, so that's what I'm up to the next little while, while I'll wait the sun to come around. Actually, we've got some shade uh, from clouds, but you'd be surprised. It's <laughs> still bloody hot. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's carry on. Cheers. So here I am reefing out this um, scene at the chine. Um, I'm using a big screwdriver instead of any sort of hook um, because I want to be able to drag it along actually tilted back slightly so that the tip of the screwdriver rides against the cotton inside but the edge of the screwdriver cuts away any paying that's left here and a neat thing I can do because this is largely done by sense of touch rather than sight also sound you can tell when you're riding just on the cotton and there's a clean joint it sort of sounds clean but as soon as you slide along and you hit some paying, you can feel that dry, hard paying. Oops, I'm not trying not to do that. And what I can do is I can twist the screwdriver left or right, either to cut at the top of the seam or the bottom of the seam. There we go, there's a big piece of paying just came out. And I'll just cut this right back. But again, because the tip of the screwdriver is riding against the cotton, which I can feel is in pretty good shape, um, I'm not actually raking out re- I keep saying raking for reefing. Anyway, uh, any of the cotton which I'd like to preserve. And, and that's worked quite well. I come right to the back here. I've done this whole seam and I would say the cotton's in great shape. I might tighten it a little bit. 
but the uh, I got all the old hard paying out in the bulk of the slick seam. Now I'm going to have to do a little googling to see if there's any way I can. Uh, oh, there's another seam down here with the slick seam in it. Anyway, I can put regular uh, putty paying back in where a slick seam had been. It's hard to imagine because it's pretty greasy stuff. Anyway, I'll keep at it. Cheers. Okay, well, welcome back. Day three. Okay, well, it's going well. Really. Doesn't look like a lot happened yesterday, but a lot did. Uh, dealing with three coats of CPS epoxy in these tiny little holes. Um, of course, it just pours out, so you're kind of mopping it back in and back in. But that's worked out really well. I'm actually very happy. I don't know if you can see. It's nice and shiny, nice thick coat of epoxy on everything going on in there. Obviously, there's a bit of a puddle in the bottom, but I can deal with that. Um, also reefed out. You can't really see uh, the garbage seam all the way along. It was full of an assorted pile of junk from concrete to caulking to poop. To, I don't know what was in there. All kinds of messes. Uh, but that's all dealt with now. So I mentioned I uh, reefed out the entire um, transom seam. And uh, it was full of all kinds of muck too. Various things. A lot of concrete. And uh, it's kind of fuzzy because unfortunately reefing it while it's, the wood is wet. You catch some fibers. But I think it'll be okay. So re and I'm going to pay it probably with um, a goo, um, just for a little security and holding that caulking in because it's, uh, yeah, just because. Sadly, I don't own a caulking iron. I kept thinking I got to get one, but uh, so I'm caulking with uh, chunks of cedar shingle. Um, not ideal, but because I don't need to put it very tight in this seam. I don't, don't want it too tight because I don't want to be pushing the uh, planks off the fasteners. Um, this works pretty well. And then for actually tamping it home, um, I just hit it with a hammer and, well, they break, but they last a while. You're about to get a ball of cotton on your head. what happens yes I'm paying with goo uh, 291 I'm just a little nervous of uh, white lead staying stuck in here and uh, I just am yeah. anyway it's a curse I know and at some point I'll dig this out and reef this properly and uh, but in the meantime it won't leak and it won't fall out, and that's the most important part. All right. I won't leave any outside because I hate the idea of there being a flap of uh, rubber that can catch on something and then pull it out of the seam. So this will all be sanded right flush. And of course, the more I can get off now, the less I have to sand. One beautiful thing about 291 is that it is sandable in a couple of days. Okay, well, there's my first sin. There'll be more. Cheers. Okay, so, well, I didn't shoot any video of it, but I re clocked um, the garbage seam, both sides, end to end. Molt of it with two um, uh, runs of cotton, and I'm pleased. I'm really quite pleased. Uh, it all went in good and hard. Yes, I am caulking with cedar shingles. I go through quite a few. I got a whole roll of broken ones, but I can drive them in the cotton in pretty hard with that, and uh, I'm pleased. Now I just got to make sure that the paying will stay in this kind of dirty and in some places oily um, seam. We'll get to that in a minute. Cheers. All right, a buddy at the uh, fellow at the boat yard here just came by and saw me uh, caulking with uh, cedar shingles and said, "How about I lend you my caulking iron? Because um, that's the way it's done." Uh, well, that's great because I'm going to run back over it and uh, and really drive it home properly with the real iron. Got to get one of these. Okay, so here we are. Day. What are we at? Four. Day four. Um, I have to say it's going well. I mean, the weather's been perfect, hotter than heck. 
Yesterday we got all the fairing putty on, and uh, a, I know it looks just like auto body filler, but it's 10 times the price, and it's supposed to be the absolute best thing for it, but it looks just like auto body filler. Anyway, so today we'll start sanding, but before we can sand, we have to finally fill all the um, nail bung where we've been trying to fix the bleeders. This epoxy is basically dry now. It's just slightly tacky, but uh, I know it's, uh, it's okay to put something in. We're gonna put a really high quality epoxy filler. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, may do a few modifications to that as we, as we move on, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll only briefly let you see from a distance the ugly mess we made at the front, where we filled in those rotten hood ends with more of the filler. It's a temporary fix, not meant to last forever. Uh, it'll keep it sort of together for a little while. Okay, we got forklifts driving around. Uh, but I gotta keep moving because I've already mixed up the epoxy. So, this is um, Interlux uh, Watertight. I imagine that we got baby blue and pink on here. It does sag a little bit, this stuff. So, I just have to cope with that and uh, sand it off after. We'll call that done. Okay. Talk to you later. I think I have a one clean finger to turn you off. Cheers. Okay, here's another really awesome tip. Um, perhaps everyone knows this, uh, but filler, when it gets to just the right hardness before it's hard enough to sand or just as it's hard enough to sand, don't sand it, scrape it off. Again, you need an awesome scraper. You need the good carbide scrapers, but it just comes off in a long, Easy, clean strokes. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Quick final go with some fine sandpaper and instead of sawdust everywhere, you get nice little shavings that are easy to clean up. Fast, easy, clean. Love it. Cheers.